Hello, I welcome you all. The problem reads, uh, if the track is to be designed so that the passengers of the roller coaster do not experience a normal force equal to zero or more than four times their weight, determine the limiting heights HA and HC so that this does not occur. The roller coaster starts from rest at position A, neglect friction. friction. This problem is coming from the Engineering Mechanics and Dynamics of 14th edition by RC Ibella. So let's draw the free body diagram. So at C, we're going to have the following uh, the weight. Um, maybe let me use another color. Okay. So we have the weight there. We'll have the weight there, and we'll have the weight there. All right, and then we have the normal force. We have the normal force. We have the normal force. Okay, so this is the normal force. NC, this is nb and this is na this is w which is just the same throughout right so how do we go about this particular problem at c okay at the top of the crest at c uh and of course a we are concerned about uh, the roller coaster maintaining its position within the track. We don't want it to move out of the track. Therefore, at C, we'll be concerned about the roller coaster not moving out of the track. We want it to maintain this track. And to achieve that, we are going to use the maximum velocity where n itself is just equal to zero. This is the limit, right? This is the limit. That is at C, at A, this is the limit. When n is less than zero, then it means the roller coaster is out of the track. Okay? When n is greater than zero, it means the roller coaster is on the track and then when n is equal to zero when n is greater than zero the roller coaster is on the track when n is equal to zero the roller coaster okay this is the roller coaster this is the roller coaster the roller coaster is on the verge of moving out of the track on the veg okay and this is what we are going to use on the top n equal to zero right then at the bottom at b here we are really concerned about the maximum uh, force that the riders are going to experience all right and we've been told here to say the limiting factor here is 4 mg n must be equal to 4 ng all right so here we are concerned about the forces that the ride does experience at B and C. We are concerned about the roller coaster maintaining its track without it moving out of the track. All right. Great. So having discussed about that, so when we are designing this, the roller coaster, we are concerned about safety. We are concerned about comfort. We are also concerned about, this is comfort. The thrill, the excitement. Okay. So we need to achieve this. Okay. We want the riders to be safe. We want the riders to be comfortable. We want the riders to experience that excitement. Right. So let's work out the, 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 the conditions that I've just talked about. So we are going to say at C, at C, N is going to be equal to zero. And at B, n at b n is going to be equal to 4 mg 
All right. So let's do so. Uh, let's start at C. At C. Let's work at C. So at C, uh, let's apply the equations uh, of motion. So let's say at C, we are going to have we we'll have our normal force in this direction like this. At uh, at C at B we'll have our normal force in this direction like so. All right. Uh, so this is N. This is the axis itself. So let's apply these equations. So we'll say summation of forces in the N direction equal to M A N. Right. What do we have? We do have a W minus N C in the direction of this axis as our positive, then this is equal to M A N. Okay. So we say that C since N, which is equal to N C is equal to zero at C. So we are only going to have W, which is just going to be equal to M, then V T squared divided by rho. Right. So this just becomes Mg equal to M V T squared divided by rho. Okay. And uh, what do we have? Of course, the idea is to find the velocity. We need the velocity at those particular points. So therefore, our Vt squared is just going to be equal to uh, rho g. Okay. Where rho is just equal to uh, r. Okay. We can leave it like that. So our Vt is just going to be equal to square root, square root of rho g. Okay. And this is just going to be equal to square root of, or if we want to, we can even leave it like this. Okay. We can leave it like this and just say this is equal to and leave it like this because we'll come and use it later on. This is equal to our row here. We have been told is 20, so this just becomes 20g. And then let's go to uh, B. Let's go to B. At B, uh, we have summation of forces in the n direction, like in the previous case, this is equal to mn. So here, n positive along the positive n axis, we are going to have n b minus w is equal to m a n. Okay, and we said n here is equal to n b and should be equal to four m g. That is the limit. We don't want that to be more than that because it will not be comfortable for the riders. So therefore, this just becomes 4mg minus mg minus mg equal to man. All right, and we know what uh, an is. This is just uh, the tangential velocity divided by rho. And this rho here is rho c. I mean rho rho c here, and then here it is rho b. All right. So this and this and this goes. And therefore, what we have here is um, v t squared. V t squared is just going to be equal to rho b times this is three uh three rho g right and this is just going to be equal to 
3 times rho b where it is 15 times g and this just becomes a 45 g all right um so with these conditions now we can apply the equations of motion uh, I mean the the the, the equation the principle of work and energy. So we'll say the kind the initial kinetic energy at A uh, plus the total kinetic energy from A to B is equal to the final kinetic energy at B. So at A is starting from rest. This is equal to zero. Therefore, we are going to have work. Uh, due to uh, the weight, so it will be W H A, and they are going in the same direction with W. We have H A like so, both in the same direction. Therefore, we have positive work. Okay, positive work. So W H A, and this is just going to be equal to half m v b squared. So this is just MGHA equal to half MVB squared. So this and this goes. And therefore, our HA is just going to be equal to 0.5 VB squared uh, divided by G. But we know that our VB squared, we calculated it, is just equal to um, VTB, which squared, which is equal to uh, 45G, right? So replacing this, our HA therefore will just be equal to 0 0.5 by 45 g divided by g and uh, this and this goes therefore our h a is just equal to uh, 0 0.5 by 45 this gives us a 22.5 and this one is in meters so that is our h a so then let's find HC. So we'll use again the work and energy principle, the initial kinetic energy at A uh, plus the total kinetic energy from A to C equal to the final kinetic energy at C. Again, this is zero. We are starting from rest. So we have the weight there, W, then we have HA uh, minus HC. And this is equal to half MVC squared. So this is just MG, HA minus HC equal to half MVC squared. So M and M goes. Therefore, we have HA minus HC equal to 0.5 BC squared divided by G. And therefore, our HC just becomes equal to, our HC, this goes this side, just becomes HA minus 0.5 BC divided by G. Our uh, VC, this is squared, is just equal to VTC squared, and this is equal to uh, 20G. So replacing that, we'll have HC equal to HA is calculated it as 22.5 minus 0.5 by 20G divided by G. So we can cancel out the G. Once we do so, then we'll find that our HC 
is just equal to uh, 22.5 minus 0.5 by 20 and this we get a 12.5 meters all right i think we are done we have found the limiting values of ha and hc let's just outline these solutions we have ha like so okay and we have hc like so so i hope this particular video was helpful and if it was give me a thumbs up like my video continue subscribing and sharing my channel bye bye and i'll see you in my next uh, screencast